Okay, hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to Easy Markets Daily Pitch International with me, Darzun Chauskas. Uh, today's the uh, 20th of March, uh, 2023. Yep. So today is Monday, guys. So I hope you're all feeling nice and relaxed after the weekend. Um, but yeah, guys, as always, in these sessions, uh, we're going to have a look at the at the charts, uh, the technical picture, uh, kind of what to expect uh, for this day, maybe for the week ahead. But yeah, guys, before we jump in into that, let's quickly have a read through our uh, risk disclaimer. So the um, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendations and should not be considered as such. Uh, this material should not be taken as an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. So I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so I'm back now. So yeah, guys, um, also just before we jump in into the charts, just a quick update on our website. You can always check it out for more information about us. It's quite easy to navigate here. So yep, yeah, but if you do have any questions, uh, drop us a uh, message here and uh, we can go from there. So like now, guys, um, Nikkei 225. So let's jump into the charts very quickly. I have a bunch of these that I really want to go through them. Um, also, just to kind of quick, uh, quickly mention that, look, if you have anything in mind, uh, you can always drop a uh, message me here in, in the live chat um, if you have any questions or anything like that. So, but yeah, um, guys, Nikkei 225. So, of course, uh, Friday was a bit of a, or in general, last week was a bit of a downer um and uh we saw a kind of a move lower here look it was very choppy and i talked about nikkei previously i said that look keep your eyes on that twenty-seven thousand territory right here the highlighted zone um and uh, if we somehow manage to stay above it then there's of course a chance for this one to move further north but hey look we have violated this territory and we have to say one thing that look um we failed to stay um and we drifted back to the downside one thing for sure that uh, the weekly candle here managed to stay below that territory right here, as you can see here. Um, and now, yes, this kind of is indicating a bearish uh, moment here. And in a way, you know, what I said previously, that if we do drop below back below that 26,850 territory, I will go to the downside. So far, I am aiming lower, but as I see here, there are a bunch of obstacles. For example, uh, this one right here. Let me just put this one on the chart here. Just bear with me one moment so yep you can see this 26,520 territory it, it it acted as a good area of uh, resistance or should i say it, it's the inside swing high of the 19th of, of january it acted as a good area of support back here on the 16th of march and uh, yep now we're kind of aiming for that one again so uh the question here is can we see another um another retest of it well to be honest i mean we're very close to it so that's why um at the moment i would say yes i'm aiming for that one but i'm actually aiming a little bit lower than that um if we do clear this hurdle then my next target is the 26,275 zone which as you can see acted as a very nice area of support as well back here on the the same 19th of january and uh it, it's the in a way it's near the current lowest point of March. So let's keep an eye on that one and let's see how that's going to play out. The, the upside scenario, of course, uh, remains the same. If we do push back above the 27,000 territory, then yes, I'll aim for these EMAs. Um, ASX 200. So this one continues to slide. Of course, excuse me. Of course, um, yes, uh, we fell below that 6,917 territory. I talked about that level and uh, yep, my next target is the 6,850. I, I spoke about that level as well last week. Uh, we're getting closer to it that's the lowest point of january um so let's see if we can get a little hold up around here somewhere near that near that area um so at this point i would say look mm, 
I am aiming for lower levels, of course. Like, ideally, I would like to see a test of this 6,787 zone right here, marked by the lowest point of November of 2022. Uh, but for that, we need to see a clearance of that lowest point of January 1st. So to clear that, the grade will go further south, somewhere towards here. Um, if we do stick around somewhere this level, the 6,850, maybe a bit of a rebound here could be possible. And in general, look, uh, today's, this week, uh, let's say everything's kind of, which is going to be running up to Wednesday. It's going to be a bit tricky because, uh, well, as you know, um, Wednesday is going to be the Fed decision. Uh, what's interesting right now is that, yes, of course, the uh the projections that uh the expectation is that uh, there is going to be a 25 basis point increase however the fed watch tool that's all over the place lately and uh basically now it's again it's almost 50 50 so 47.6 towards no rate hike 52.4 towards the towards a rate hike uh, 25 basis point rate hike so um this of course will change going up all the way to wednesday and then wednesday is going to be different so yeah let's can just continue monitoring the situation guys being very careful uh that's the most important here just go with from what you have here and uh, just expect some sort of let's say uh irrationality um if you think that the market should go this way well guess what it might you know it might do something crazy and uh, that's why just be a little bit more on the cautious side so at this point from the technical perspective look if we stay below that 6,917 territory yes i will um i will remain bearish if we stay below it if we push back above it um there is a chance for a push higher now look i mean sometimes uh, well not sometimes but uh this is what i mentioned as well when we have formations like this now uh, what I'm talking about here. So whenever we have, let's say, a sharp decline, a kind of strong candle to the downside, and then we, the next kind of few days, for example, the candles are moving in this kind of gradual decline pattern. Um, such patterns tend to break to the upside later on. Again, not all the time, but the percentage-wise, I mean, that it's definitely a higher percentage uh in terms of breaking out to the upside and rather than the downside so in a way we have something like this or should i say could be forming something like this now it's not a uh falling channel it's more of a like a falling wedge and if according to all the ta rules uh falling wedges tend to break to the upside however however again a with a little caveat on caveat on this uh, this end it has to be said that a confirmation break is still needed so in other words if you're looking for some higher levels on this one wait for a break of this upper side of the of the uh falling wedge here of this uh yeah of this uh, this downside line if we clear that one then yep we could go to the downs uh, sorry to the upside here a little bit in terms of the downside now look so far it's working out uh, as i said it's reaching my level let's see if we can get a maybe a little rebound here um and then we will go from there now nasdaq 100 so of course this one's going to be probably in uh standby mode as well uh we might see some activity look i mean unless something starts coming out from the uh in general with the banking sector i mean that's going to be probably down more than the nasdaq but still um nasdaq at the moment yes it's kind of forming a possible bullish flag we have our poll we have our breakout the beautiful breakout that happened last week i talked about this look and and by the way we talked we reached my target here the 12792 my next target was that the the 12950 and then we have the 13000 mark so at this point, um, now we can say that, look, maybe something like this could be the case. Um, so if we do retrace back down, and as I mentioned to you previously in one of my uh, previous videos, I uh, said that, look, whenever we break uh, a trend line, a downside line or an upside line, we kind of tend to retest it from uh, from the other side. So let's say in this case, we broke the downside line. There is a, there is a chance we might see a retest of this uh, trend line from above here of course i'm keeping an eye on that 12485 at the moment but if we do drop below it a little bit then yes i'm uh, like i said I'll, I'll i'll consider a retest of this 
mm, this downside line and then maybe a rebound back to the upside now for the downside in order to let's say consider lower levels i need to see this one dropping and staying below this downside line and somewhere below this 12,333 territory now again i might change that level level later on by at this point i'm sticking to that one dow jones of course uh yes uh, feeling the heat um unlike the nasdaq so yeah dow jones is declining and uh, we are seeing yes the financials are not in the best uh the financial sector is not in the best uh, state right now so we are seeing a nice uh move here but look what i talked about previously about this and i said that hey if we um manage to break this highlighted zone and stay below it yes i'll go lower what happened last week we just got a bunch of false breakouts and that didn't really work out well for the mm, for well for anybody to be honest i mean neither the bears were happy about this because again we, we got false breakouts and neither the bulls are actually enjoying this so you know uh at this point i would say just continue observing the price action let's see if we can uh stay below this uh 31,740 um, zone somewhere around here if we can stay below it and yes oh by the way that's the lowest point of november of 2022 if we stay below it then yes i'll aim for uh actually now i'm going to aim for the current lowest point of march near the 3, 000, uh, 31,430 and then if we clear that then yes i'll go further south uh, so I'm going to go slowly on this, guys. Again, like I said, don't forget about uh, false breakouts. The fact that we are already, um, let's say the, the the futures here are already breaking the hurdle. That's um, uh, even before the European session. So that's kind of really uh, putting me off a little bit here. But uh, in terms of, let's say, further downside, maybe we could see a bit of a retracement back. But again, let's uh, let's not rush into anything. Let's go from what we have. Uh, the German index next. So, yeah, uh, 14,767 at the moment from the futures. And look at this, how well it's playing out. So, look, I mean, I talked a lot about the 100 day EMA here. Um, this was my target, initial target. Then I said that, hey, maybe this 14,681 level could be a nice one. And look how well it all played out. Look how well it all, well, it all got tested. So, at this point, I would say, Mm, I am leaning further south, guys, but uh, my my problem here is that the market is not the market is not open yet, and we are already making this kind of decline. So, okay, in general, I am bearish. Look, I mean, if we do drop and stay below the 108 EMA here, then I'm gonna aim for that 14,681. And if we clear that one, let me just put some arrows here on my chart. And, and if we clear that one, then yes, my next target, guys, as I mentioned already before, is the 200-day EMA, somewhere around here. Um, it's currently around that 14,400, but um, it, we need for that, I need to see a nice, beautiful clearance of this little target around here, this little hurdle um and if we get and if we get that then yes great wonderful we'll go further south but at the moment my problem is that we are getting a bit of a hold up here again so you know that's where it don't be surprised for example if what we see is let's say we don't get a break further south here uh we just start bouncing around here up and down and by the way i need to adjust adjust a few of my levels here and no longer valid i think yes in general i think uh everything has to be adjusted here you know what um let me remove some of the stuff i think it's a lot of things are here in in the way no longer valid um this needs to go we can recycle a few things always recycle guys um there yep there we go so let me just get rid of this no longer needed look i'm gonna mark the, mm, the friday's low here the 14,850 now if we climb back above it maybe um a bit of a retracement here could be possible and in general by the way look at this i mean this arrow here worked out nicely so what i'm going to do here is I'm gonna drop it a little bit i'm going to reuse it and i'm going to put it this way so if we do climb back and stay above the 14,850 maybe we could see a bit of a retracement here push back up towards that 50-day uh, ema again so we have today and tomorrow and actually we have most of the day on wednesday as well before the decision so um be careful with that one um and like i said if you are a bear on dax 
guys look it could go further south but i need some clarity here i need some confirmation breaks i need a, a, a nice good drop uh below this 14,680 zone if we get that great i'll go further south um now jumping into the dollar index so Mm, this one's working out perfectly as well because again um what i talked about uh previously was that look i mean i said that we are we could be in a falling veg pattern so far it's working out so as long as we remain in the falling veg uh still it could drift lower and uh so far yes i mean we fell back below this 100 uh 104.05 territory we fell below the 50-day ema and we we're kind of yeah, shifting a little bit lower now my next target was this 103.05 and to be honest i'm still kind of stick sticking to it uh as long as we remain within the pattern now according to all the ta rules such patterns tend to break to the upside but again a confirmation break is still needed so now what i'm going to do here is going to i'm going to grab this line here and i'm going to reuse it and i'm going to push it some put put it somewhere around here so if we do clear the downside line and we push somewhere above the 104.25 territory right here that's where it could become a little bit more interesting for a few more buyers and we could see a drift to the upside now i'm not going to spend uh too much time on this one and kind of aiming way too too to too high levels but um initially of course the the 100 then the 200 day ema and then the 105.32 level and then we'll take it from there uh, but at this point like i said as long as we remain within the pattern there is still tendency to the downside uh now jumping into gold look at this monstrosity i mean it is insane i mean friday guys that was just that was just insane look i mean i talked about this on friday uh, by the way apologies for the lighting on friday i mean that was a little bit too i was too a little bit too bright uh hopefully now i'm a little bit you know toned down a little uh so yeah uh hope this is a little bit better um but now look i talked about this on on friday and basically i said to you that look if we i mean clear this territory that 1937 zone i mean i will go higher initially aiming for this downside line uh, again a tentative one as i said don't focus on it too much but um i'll aim for that one first this one's taken from the drawn from the high of the 8th of march of last year and uh yeah we cleared it i mean we cleared it and we just continue to rally look i'm gonna remove this as i said it's a tentative line not not really uh valid too much so now the question here is i mean we are hitting that you know two thousand dollar mark already i think as we speak um are we just a second uh oh we came very very close to it so this is a bit of a tease now i would say so look um two thousand dollars there we go um beautiful a beautiful um move here to the upside um it's kind of stalling as you can see here right now this is, this is quite interesting maybe a bit of a decline here could be possible but at this point guys well this is a little bit tricky so although i would like to see maybe a bit of a retracement but to be honest in this market i mean this insanity here this is just wow i mean we'll in a way i would say this way if we do clear that 2000 territory look we have the 2070 zone as a next target um i think i need to put a monthly chart on this one just to show you what's happening here so basically the 2070 is not the all-time high the all-time high is 2075 and this is what we had here back in august of 2020 yep there we go so that's our target and uh in a way ideal target but at this point look we are playing fooling around right now with the psychological 2000 territory we um we're at the moment i can see that we are still struggling to hit that uh, let's see how today's day is going to play out and to be honest look i'm not going to get surprised if we for example see this one um jumping around here somewhere maybe below the 2000 mark and then on wednesday we just boom and pop higher uh again will that be the case who knows but this is the market we're dealing with uh, so at, look at this point i am keeping an eye on that uh psychological 2000 territory we're currently you know trading near it if we clear it and we stay above it i'll go further north um we do have the next potential target somewhere around here uh the 2009 zone marked 
by the high of the 10th of March of last year. And uh, yeah, uh, oh, sorry, not last year. Yeah, last year, sorry. Yeah, that, the 10th of March of last year. So uh, this is the, yeah, the, the rally that happened when the war started and uh, yeah, then it kind of faded off. So let's see what's going to happen this time. I mean, this time it's not the war, it's actually the financial sector. So this is what's kind of troubling us a little bit and everybody's jumping into yens and everybody's jumping into golds and you know pr other precious metals like silver um but again it might continue to rally a little bit here more um and to be honest i personally i would like to see a rally all the way towards that maybe 2070 or 50 at least um if we uh, start drawing some let's say um some downside lines here for example taking this peak and that peak and then we're gonna have like a tight a slight decline line here so maybe the, actually the 2050 territory could be a nice target look as we speak right now we are prepared to it seems like we're prepared to test the uh the 2000 mark um again and we and we hit that there we go the psychological 2000 territory it took us um what uh, a year roughly yep uh, not even a full year actually to get back to that 2000 mark and at this point guys the question here is can, how far can we go how far this this kind of st steep rally can go and without any like a decent retracement to be honest at the moment given that we broke the mm, the highest point of february or which was the previous highest point of of this year uh, we broke it and uh now the, i mean if we just applied uh, similar logic let's say as we do uh, where's that price range there we go so let's say we had this move here and uh, if um, if you do the same thing um, kind of here uh, you can see that in a way the the target if you if, if this breakout now could indicate that we had um, you know we're going to do the same maneuver um, as this as this previous uh, drop here mm, again that could be the case however i and normally what it happens is that uh we do actually get smaller moves than that so look um i think that um let me just put this on the chart here can i just drag this why is it doing this ah uh, yes i think it's this way there we go so okay there we go there we go um so basically it might not do the whole kind of uh the whole size uh, the whole size here it might just do about 70 percent of it and just kind of you know and this is like i said this is where the uh the 70 the 50 the 70 uh the 2050 the 2070 dollar marks are so again good idea again let's see how this is going to play out we ha we should not rush into anything at this point we are just continuing to explode higher but um hey how far can that go I mean, if the indices somehow correct a little bit uh back to the upside this week then well guess what gold could pull back a little so just keep an eye on that one oil um this one yeah is a tragedy like however it's a yeah it's a bear market it's a it's a bear's fantasy i mean i don't know dream there we go um so yeah it's so far it's working out nicely look i mean i talked about this idea of, the, of a curve here maybe near this uh, psychological 70 territory and we kind of did that and there we go we're dr drifting back to the downside we were falling below the 66.12 uh, i said before that if we clear that one and stay below it my next target is the 62.44 which is the lowest point of December of 2021. Simple as that, guys. Not going to spend too much time on talking about this, but this is my target. Uh, Bitcoin, just very quickly on that one. Uh, look, so far, so good. Again, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because, again, this is working out nicely because um, I talked about this and I said that if we clear this hurdle, this uh, 25,000, kind of 367 or something like that, 250. 250 zone um then yes my next target is um and if we stay above it my next target is the psychological uh 30 000 mark well so far we are doing a good job here and uh we seem to be uh moving in that direction so uh, it seems like 30 000 here we come but again let's not rush into anything don't be surprised for example if we do see a push closer to the 30,000 mark we don't hit that we hit the 27 29,000 something something like 900 and then we drift correct back to the downside so that's why always target don't target mm, let's say if you did enter along here 
great congratulations it's going nicely in your direction uh but let's say in your next target is the 30,000 mark let's say i would say target to 29,000 and uh you know then leave a little bit of room for man maneuverability maybe it'll stop near the 29,000 and then drift back down so hey uh because don't forget that what you see everybody else sees so you know the market does like to do these little tricks uh uh, ADJPY jumping into a few pairs. There we go. ADJPY drifting lower. Of course, uh, the weakness, the whole weakness in the um, in the market right now, in the in the indices and in the in the stock market. Yes, in general, uh, yes, is bringing uh, gold uh, so gold back to the table. It's bringing uh, yen back to the table. So yeah, I mean, as you can see here, all the yen pairs are uh, you know are moving in that direction where the yen is getting stronger against its major your counterparts now in this case here we've reached my target look i said before that when we rebounded from this area last week i talked about this i said that if we fall back below the 88.55 territory i'll aim for this 87.42 which we managed to reach that great now what slightly below that we do have the 87 zone which um in a way could um, play out nicely here as well so look at this point i am leaning towards the downside but not really too much below, let's say, this uh, lowest point of December uh, of last year. And uh, like I said, my target is the 87 zone. I want to see if we can get that. But for that, I need to see a drop below the 87.41. I know that's only a little bit of, you know, a little bit of a small little target. But hey, um, I want to see how this is going to play out here. Maybe we'll get a little rebound or something like that. So at this point, this is what I'm aiming for. NZDCHF, beautiful hold up. Look at this. I mean, I talked about this last week and I said that, hey, if we stay below this downside line, first of all, my target was the downside line because I said that if we clear this 0 0.5745, I'll aim higher, initially aiming for that 50-day EMA and then this downside line, which we managed to reach perfectly. Great. What's next? Now, the uh, of course, we need to see a clear break through the downside line in order to go higher. But at this point, we're getting a nice little healthy correction, I would say. Mm. And to be honest, I mean, we could correct even lower, maybe toward, back towards this 0 0.5745. Now, that's where my downside scenario is going to be from. Um, if we drop and stay below it, and again, not a false breakout, just that we drop and stay below it. Now, that's where it could become a little bit more interesting. And uh, we could see some more sellers jumping in. So, uh, but for the upside, um, not only actually, not only that an, I would need to see a break of this downside line, but also let me just... Uh, grab one of the lines um there we go not only that but a push above the 0 0.5826 territory would be required so if we clear that one uh at the same time we would already be mm, above the downside line which is which could be seen as a good nice positive indication because again a break of a trend line i mean that signals a change of uh, the trend well at least in the short run uh but um, then also maybe the 100 day ema could approach this area and uh this could coincide nicely and then we could see a nice you know break through this bar barrier a fourth coming higher high would be confirmed and then we could start aiming for that 200 day ema uh usdjpy so looking at this picture here look i talked about this as well i said that if we fall back below the 132.28 zone yes i will um I aim to the downside and sorry not fall if we stay below it and uh on uh on friday we we declined and uh yes we fell back below it and we stayed below it and uh look what's happening right now we are drifting further south at the moment i'm targeting this uh 129.80 um 80 zone yep that's the one that's the low of the 10th of february of this year so yeah and then we'll take it from there to be honest um like i said that's my target for now Let's see if we can reach that, if by any chance it drifts back to the upside. Now, this is where I look. I talked about this for this territory right here for the upside, the 130, 135.11, something like that. Um, but what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to lower it down a little bit towards my 200 day ema if we clear that one great we would be above all of the emas on my daily chart and then when we and then we could see you know like a nice push to the upside back to the upside but again all this area here i mean again we maybe we could see that little retracement here you know and something like that but don't forget that we are still below this downside line 
So if we clear this downside line, yes, more positivity could come in, but the fact that we are below all the EMA, so this could be just a temporary break. We could go, you know, higher, test the uh, the EMAs, and then kind of, you know, drift back to the downside. That's why my upside scenario is from around here, from above all of the EMAs. USDCHF, now this one, I removed all the drawings because I want to start fresh on this one. Because look, um, on one hand, uh, we if we look at this one, you know, overall, uh, we'll see that we are currently uh, below all of the EMAs. So in a way, uh, that's a bearish indication. Um, however, if we do start climbing back up here, back above the 50, back above the 100, great. We could start going higher and also uh, the upside. If you are looking, if you are looking for some upside scenarios here, look, we have our poll and we have our little kind of correction to the downside. What, what is that? That's a nice bull, bullish flag here for me. Again, will that be the case? Mm, it's a tricky one because, again, we're currently below all of the EMA. So that's why I don't really purely rely on something one. Um, the MACD is still below. Uh, it just kind of moved below uh, zero. So it's kind of in negative territory right now. So again, also, you know, that upside scenario is not really supported. However, however, I would say the, the probably the easier option here for the upside could be to keep an eye on this hurdle, the 0 0.9343 zone. Uh, because at the same time, it, a break above that area uh, could uh, push above the 100-day uh, EMA. And uh, then we could target the 200-day EMA um together with this territory right here and then we could take it from there guys the 0 0.9440 could be a nice good target but again let's uh let's not rush into anything for the downside now this is where the tricky bit comes in now we do have some key support levels and these are going to be my targets 0 0.9072 and the 0 0.9060 uh these are going to be my two targets but for in order to aim for those i need to see a drop somewhere below this 0 0.92 territory simple as that so if we fall below it i'll aim for these uh so let me just put some arrows here for our future reference um and uh yeah if we do drop back below the 0 0.92 territory i'll consider a move lower here uh the little obstacle in the way of course is the inside swing low here the 0 0.9160 65. Okay, keep that in mind. But if we clear that one as well, then yes, uh, further declines are possible. And in terms of the upside, a break through this area is required. Use the CAD very quickly on that one. Uh, don't have, I don't have it in there in my um, um, in my list here. But uh, hey, this is something that I quickly decided to pick up on. Uh, USD CAD, look, uh, this one's also interesting. I mean, somebody would say, hey, maybe it's coiling up. And to be honest, you're not going to be wrong in this one because, uh, look, we have uh, the, the downside line here and uh, we have an upside line here. So uh, what's next? Uh, so basically, it's not really ideal here. I mean, this is something like that. Okay, roughly, guys. I mean... It's never like an ideal touch here or something like that. So roughly around this, the around these lines. So if you're looking for a nice, good, um, you know, clear breakout here, wait, wait for this one, wait for this one to do something, and then we could, you know, take it from there. So if we clear the downside line, we could go a little bit higher, uh, but not too much. Initially, I'll target the current highest point of March. Um, if we do uh, break the upside line here, I am going to aim. Well, this is the tricky bit with the downside. I will aim for the 1.3652, but um, actually, ideally, I would like to see maybe a test of the mm, the 1.36 zone. And then we would take it from there. Uh, GBP, JPY, just a quick update. Look, so far, so good. Everything is according to the plan. I talked about this last week. Uh, I said that, hey, maybe a bit of a retracement here could be possible. We tested the upside line here. We rebounded, pushed higher, uh, test, tested the EMAs. And I said that, hey, if those hold, another decline here could be possible. Boom. So far, so good. Working out perfectly. Now the question here is, can we see this? Can we see a clear breakout here? Well, um, again, while we're stuck in, in between these two trend lines, I'm going to just observe the price action now. I'm just going to watch it. And uh, yeah, I'm going to wait for the news to come out. Because again, if the yen buying resumed, I mean, this could be massive and we could see a nice a nice breakout here to the downside so in other words if we break the upside line we stay below the 159.21 zone somewhere below that um, i'm going to be leaning a little bit more towards the downside gbp usd so this one is tricky 
because we're in the range. Overall, we're in the range. So congratulations for all those range traders. Um, you're probably enjoying the moment here. But um, personally, I, mean, I do like more trendy, uh, more trendy kind of markets. And that's why, I mean, I, I need to see a clear break through one of the sides first before considering uh, the next short term directional move. Um, look. To support the bulls, I mean, you can see what's happening here. We're above the midpoint of this range, and uh, we're above the uh, this this little hurdle, this 1.2114 zone, and also we are above all of the EMAs on my um, on my daily chart here, guys. So, um, okay, that of course indicates you know towards some positivity. Uh, if we stay above it, I'll go higher. I'll go towards the upper side of this range if we start falling back below the emas i will go towards the lower side of the range i'm going to keep it short and simple and finally euro usd similar story again we're also in the range i mean again there's not much data coming out uh today um we do have christine lagarde the economic calendar says that the christine lagarde is going to be t delivering a speech so be careful during if, if that's the case then yeah be careful uh, with that one, uh, we might see a bit of volatility because just because of the absence of other in, in, any other news. Um, but yeah, um, then keep your eyes on the, of course, the, the economic events, uh, again, leading to Wednesday. Uh, but at this point, at the moment, we don't really have much, you know, happening. So don't be surprised if we're going to see a dull market or let, let's say less volatility, less volatility going up to Wednesday. So uh, the, at the moment, if we everything stays this, as it is, so I would say this way, as long as we stay above the 50-day EMA, I'll aim higher. I'll aim for that 1.0748. If we start uh, dropping back down, um, I will consider a move to, towards the 100-day EMA and or maybe even the 200 day ema so at the moment i'm playing the ema game um just because it's a bit of you know a bit choppy it's kind of it's we're oscillating around those emas so again i don't like that in general but um hey what can i do um look if we do push uh oh, 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 let me see if we do push above the 1.0748 or let's round it up to 50. If we push above the 1.0750 territory, yes, I'll go a little bit more to the upside. So simple as that. Um, okay, guys, so I'll have to wrap it up here. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I really appreciate your time, guys, your views, your likes, your comments, everything. So this was a quick uh, overview of uh, the technical overview of some of the instruments. Look, if you have any, any instruments in mind, uh you can always drop me a uh, a message here um yep i can pick it up um in during my next session um if you wish you know but um yeah guys thank you very much for joining in and watching this one till the end i hope you'll have a fantastic trading day today uh look be careful stay safe have your stop losses in place and everything will be fine at the moment uh we are kind of going to be I think that uh, running uh, like qu calmly all the way into uh, up to Wednesday, and then after that, that's when all the excitement could start again. You know, so uh, look, let's see how this is gonna play out. Um, like I said, be careful, be stay safe, have your stop losses in place. Tune in tomorrow, as always, uh, to my uh, daily pitch. Uh, it's seven o'clock GMT time, guys. So yeah, I hope you'll like that one as well. Thank you very much for joining in today, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.